So next topic, I guess that's where well, I could put that. What's the current uh, status with AMS, uh, our sponsorship? Um, yeah. Basically, we are back to the previous situation where Cloud is paying the account. So the Amazon budget we got um, is uh, totally spent by, by now. And um, so far, we won't have more budget from Amazon. That's Did uh, Amazon confirm that, uh, or is it just um, the current state of affairs? Uh, last time I, I was in contact with them, um, that was, um, yeah, we, we, it's difficult to know for sure um, if they won't sponsor us anymore, but at least, um, yeah. That's a good state. Any other topic? Um, on the security release for tomorrow, are there any things that we need to be aware of for as infra? Um, so we've got a weekly that will be out tomorrow. We've got the LTS 2.277.2 that will be out tomorrow. No. Um... I think we are on track for the release. Um, we shouldn't have, I'm not expecting anything tomorrow for that. As long as we don't play with the release instance. Well, and, and I assume the, the release is already built. Uh, that yes. Daniel has already certainly built it and has it ready and staged privately so that it's not, not that we're dependent on the release infrastructure tomorrow, we're dependent on delivery infrastructure tomorrow and, and the mirrors, et cetera. So, so far we don't stage the packaging. So, so far we, we still have to package. That process oh. usually takes 15 minutes. So we still rely on the release environment. Um, okay. But um, indeed the Jenkins core version is already built and staged. Um, so we just have to promote, which is something that Daniel does manually at the end of the operation. Okay, so the war file is built and ready to package. Packaging will actually happen tomorrow. Yes, sir. Okay, got it. Thank you. So any last minute topic? Mm, yeah, I had a question. So let's assume we need uh, to build another LTS uh, baseline for 2.263. So how long would approximately take after we have a branch uh, ready? Uh, three to four hours, right? So, who, who I mean, who are you targeting, Tim or me? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm still a bit concerned about tables to diffs impact uh, okay. because with uh, the tomorrow's release, we might be pushing uh, users to update. We know about the number of plugins which are still not compatible. So I wonder what would be our escape hatch if uh, there is a major uh, negative feedback in the community after the release. So basically, the, the once once you have the codes on the on the branch on Jenkins CI slash Jenkins, once your branch is ready, um, the release environment it takes approximately two hours to build Jenkins the one file. So basically, um, LTS and the weekly are the same. Yeah. Yes. So in terms of in terms of build time, it's exactly the same. In terms of configuration, um, the, the LTS require a little bit more work, but it's like maybe 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, just the time to uh, to update the file with the correct configuration um, and someone to review that configuration. Um, so yeah, it uh, approximately approximately take one hour. 30 to hours to build the Jenkins core, and then 15 minutes to, to package uh, and publish that, that, those new packages. It, I, I would be more concerned, isn't the bigger challenge that we've got to have whatever fixes are implemented in 2.277.2 would have to be backported and verified on the 2.263 base. And, and I, I was worried that that would I, I think that would take more time than the than the time to do the the build, but are, Oleg, are you assuming that D 
Daniel or others would already have done that even before before making a public before making 277.2 publicly available. Yeah, it's something to be done if we decide to do so. Okay, got it. It's that's still a to be done. Got it. Thank you. Well, it's not to be done because uh, there is no confirmation that it needs to be done. I was just wondering if uh, there is a strong pressure to do that. Uh, how long would it take? Got it. Okay, thanks. I still have a few plugins uh, to fix for tonight, including Scripter. Do you have an idea how long it would take to backport everything? I don't know what changes were. I, I don't know what changes were in 277.2. And so I'm intentionally staying staying away from that, trusting the security team to do it. And but I assume the changes are not that big. Uh, there are some potential downsides like uh, in GT version differences, etc. cetera. Uh, but yeah. I wouldn't expect it to be a major deal. Maybe a team with a small insights. Okay. No, it doesn't look too serious from what I've just been having a look at. Okay. So then, then I'll probably wait a little bit before restarting the release environment. So we just keep it available if we have to read something. Great. Right. Any other question, suggestion? Then I propose to finish the meeting here. Thanks for your time um, and see you on RC. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thanks. Everybody, welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, um, so, so, a few announcements before we continue. The first one is we are going to upgrade the Kubernetes cluster used by the Jenkins project next week. Uh, we are planning to do that on Thursday, on Tuesday, sorry, sorry, next Tuesday. Um, I'll do that with Garrett and Damien. So norm normally everything, I mean, we should have interruption, um, but yeah, better to app prepare than on that in advance anyway. Um, the second topic that I briefly want to mention is I created the GitHub alumni group on so the rule is as a contributor, once you have privileged access, if you know that uh, you won't be able to contribute um, in a short, in short term, it's just better to, to ask to be, to have your permission reduced so we don't take the risk um, of getting compromised uh, for whatever the reason. So um, that was the second thing that I want to mention. So if we go back to the ongoing work, um, this morning we, we did uh, specific um, releases uh, using release.ci and we faced um, a bunch of issues um, for some reason. So basically we got timeout issues between the Jenkins agent and the Jenkins controller. Um, so we were affected by the same behavior on infra.ci last week. A Damien made the suggestions to switch um, the connection using WebSockets, um, which seems to be solving uh, the connection issues. I still don't understand why we were affected now, why, why we are affected now um, by not using the WebSockets. Um, but yeah, switching to the WebSocket made, uh, made, made it working. Um, maybe I let you have some ideas there. No, not uh, right away. Um, I need to take a look because I haven't seen the problem. I'm, I'm just wondering if, if today's is the way to go using WebSockets by default. So current state of WebSockets that it's officially still in preview okay. because uh, WebSockets uh, works perfectly fine on Java 8 for Java 11. And hence for our instances, uh, there are some known issues with uh, certificates, uh, which haven't been troubleshooted yet. So we reviewed the, it with JC Greek, and JC said that uh, most likely it's a specific environment issue, but uh, we have never really tested that. So we, basically, if you use WebSockets with Java 11, formally you're still um, using unsupported con configuration. Okay. So then, then, then I can share with you the the message that I got this morning. Um, 
the second question is that we definitely need to get it over the line. It's just a matter of who would be contributing to it because JC is busy with quite other projects at the moment. Oleg, okay. when you when you say Java 11, is that on the controller side or the agent side or both? Well, as a project, we officially do not recommend running different versions of Java uh, on uh, controllers uh, and uh, agents because it may lead to various uh, interesting situations in terms of uh, serialization of base types provided by GDK. Uh, well, not base types, just uh, classes by GDK because they may have a different binary format. So. We do not really test combinations of uh, Java 11 controller with Java 8 agents or otherwise. And personally, I wouldn't recommend this configuration. Yeah, just for the context, I'm pretty sure we are not using Java 8 uh, on the community. Yeah, so CI Jenkins IO and uh, all the modern instances run with Java 11. If you want to build with Java 8, you basically set up environment. So your build uh, runs with Java 8. But at the same time, yes, the instance should be using Java 11, I guess. Well, maybe it's not the case for Docker images. Uh, at least in the Jenkins Infra project, release.ci, infra.ci, and ci.jenkins.io are running on Java 11. Terrestrial.ci uh, and cert.ci are running on Java 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and things like the agents, some of those agents will be running Java 8, though, like the ACI agents are all, um, will be running Java 8. They won't be running it. Java 11 with a separate Java for the build. Yeah, it was uh, noting that uh, our instances are relatively simple when you take uh, the number of installed plugins. <coughs> so there are some uh, foundational ones and uh, there is no guarantee that uh, any plugin would work on such configuration. As a former remoting maintainer, I do recommend that, but yeah, it works. It's going to be fun, even more fun with Java 17. Uh, but yeah, I guess we can discuss it uh, closer to the autumn. Thanks. Um, any other suggestion regarding the issue we had this morning? So basically, we have a, we have PRs um, to change the configuration of infra.ci. We just did the manual change this morning, so we could move fa faster. Um, but once the release is over, we'll. Um, will apply the configuration change. So that's that thing. That's the only thing. So until tomorrow, uh, we put on all the job on infra the CI that managed the this cluster. So no change right now to that. Um, the next topic. Um, so if you have some topic that you want to bring, um, that's a break break time as we don't have a lot of things. So something that I want to share is some experimentation that I did with Keycloak last week. So Keycloak um, offered the, the possibility to delete, to allow user to delete their own accounts. Um, I just faced two main, I mean, one minor issue. Um, Keycloak changed the team. Uh, so we want, if you want to keep using the Jenkins team, we have to do some minor modification, which is not a big deal, but, but yes. But more importantly, deleting users, only delete the users from Keycloak, not from LDAP, um, which means that um, if you really want to use that feature, we really have to switch using Keycloak um, instead of LDAP for issues that Jenkins are that's um, one thing. And the second limitation is deleting user to not delete the group um, inside um, Keycloak, which means that in the current state, the next time a user creates a new account with a previous